call this meeting to order of the Haywarden City Council. This is our regular council meeting uh, on Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. It is 530. First on the agenda is to uh, approve the September 25th, 2024 regular council meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor of approving the uh, minutes um, of September 25th, 2024, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 to 0. Um, 1B, approval of the October 9, 2024 claims for payment. Any questions or comments? Then a motion. I make a motion to approve the October 9th claims for payment. And a second? Second. All those in favor of approving the October 9, 2024 claims for payment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 to 0. Thank you. 1C, open business from the community. Yes. John Grease, still residing in Haywarden. Um, I have a few questions, no answers. Last meeting, after you guys came out of closed session, did you reconvene the meeting? We did. You did? Yes. Did, did you open it up to the public? We forgot to open the doors. So does that make it an illegal meeting? I don't believe so. So you had a public meeting without the public's being allowed into the room, right? We just uh, adjourned after the closed session was over. You didn't do the consent agenda? Um, did we do that right before? We did. Yeah, we did. We did. You know, I would just let him speak at this point, and, and this doesn't need to go a back and forth conversation. Yeah. If there's a question or concern, obviously address it at this time. Yeah. So you're saying the consent agenda was done before that? Because I was here at the meeting. I'm curious, um, the last two meetings, the recording hasn't been complete. And I'm wondering if that's going to be repaired. Now, I'm suggesting, and I think the, the answer is right in front of you, not last meeting, but the meeting before that, you had uh, to go into closed session but there was still some stuff left over on the agenda to do. Councilman Harvey, after you were ready to remove everybody in attendance out so you could do your closed meeting, Councilman Harvey suggested that you finish the agenda so that we didn't have to wait out in the hallway for the meeting until that was done. And you did that two meetings ago. The last meeting, I don't believe you did. So I would hope like i said the answer seems to be right in front of you that if you're going to go into closed meeting which you never take or haven't since i've seen it take any action after you come out of the closed meeting could we just get that put on on the bottom of the agenda so that we're not out there waiting for it to open up again when there's still things on the agenda Sometimes it's at the beginning, sometimes it's at the end. I've seen that over the years. Right. Dep depends on the topic. That's what I'm just asking because there seems mm -hmm. to be, in my mind at least, that you had a meeting and there was nobody back in here because as far as everybody was concerned, it was closed session. When you opened the doors again, we came back in and then you said, well, we made the mistake, so let's to get rid of that mistake, I would hope that you go with what Councilman Harvey suggested two meetings ago. Thank you. It's nice that somebody mentions my greatness. I can hardly ignore it. <laughs> Anyone else? 
Okay, we'll move on to the mayor's report. Uh, yesterday I met in Rock Valley with uh, Nate Heisinger and representatives from Sioux and Lyon counties. Uh, also, uh, each community that was affected by the flood uh, had a representative there. Uh, we had representatives of uh, the state and FEMA who were uh, working in the area of uh, flood remediation. The purpose of the meeting was to coordinate efforts and to define roles and responsibilities in our long-term recovery efforts. We plan on meeting twice a month. I was invited to speak at the grand opening and ribbon cutting of the Haywarden Regional Healthcare's expansion and new clinic. The hospital continues to evolve and uses the latest technologies to provide outstanding care to the community. Uh, looking forward, the um, Haywarden Chamber of Commerce will be doing a trunk or treat event again this year on October 31st from 5 to 6 o'clock. It will be held at the Haywarden Community Center parking lot. Um, and they, we expect um, about 400 kids. Well, we encourage you to decorate your trunks and come participate. And if, um, if you have kids, uh, it's a fun time. They get a lot of candy in a short amount of time. Uh, also, we've got Halloween Town, hosted by Brian and Christy Warner in the Community Center from 5 <laughs> till eight <clears throat> that is definitely worth the trip yeah. that you should you should check that out if you haven't um and that's all i have so let's move to staff reports gary oh well, once again i want to commend our city staff on the job they've done with the added workload this crazy year is presented uh, they've been amazing and i can't thank them enough like everyone else we must continue our daily functions during this difficult year while dealing additional workload brought on by the flood disaster. Um, I'm preparing an RFP for accounting services that should be ready for your review at our next council meeting uh, with uh, approval being requested on the November 13th meeting. We will then submit it to various accounting firms inviting their proposal for um, fiscal year 2025 and beyond. So. Also, uh, subdivision regulations are needed for future development in our community. Jenny has provided some suggested regulations, which are in staff review. Uh, once we have a first, first draft for the council, we'll bring them forward for your critique and possible future action to or addition to our city code. Uh, these regulations will provide for, the, uh, for uh, controlled extension of public improvements, public services, and utilities, as well as making sure the design is consistent with the city comprehensive plan. They also allow the city to consider the placement of easements, uh, parks, and public work right of ways. So, uh, we will, we've never had subdivision regulations in our in our code, and we really need to as we move forward with future development. So, um, so we'll get that to you someday when we get through reviewing them. So, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I have nothing to report. Travis? Uh, NCC Heavy Machinery class has been working on clearing Avenue D. Um, once they have the road cleared, then they'll start uh, grading it, uh, fixing a few washouts from the flood. So I hope to have that wrapped up in a couple weeks. Um, happy to have them here for their help. Um, last Monday, we had a crane incident uh, at our new substation site. Uh, crane came into contact with the north transmission line, causing an outage. Uh, no one was injured, thank goodness. Um, much of the damage uh, was just contained to the crane. We were able to switch to our south transmission line. Um, we're gonna, we were going to make that switch at some point anyway to do the transmission line work to the new substation uh, that just sped up that switching. Um, so we'll keep it on the uh, south transmission line until we're ready to switch over to the new substation. Um, that section of line that was damaged was also a line that was coming down. So there, there's a little silver lining in, in the incident. Um, the next day, we were able to set the new transformer on its pad uh, with no incident. Um, I did file the report with the Iowa Utility Commission and sent the same to NIPCO. Uh, the second transformer is scheduled for delivery on Tuesday, October 15th. Thank you, Travis. 
Chief. Nothing to report. Carol. I'm continuing to work with the state of Iowa and the homeowners, trying to get them either back in their home or get some type of resolution for them on funding to find them a new home. That's kind of been an ongoing project. Um, I'm going to speak later to another housing project later in the agenda. Um, but other than that, it's just been very, very busy. Uh, before the flood happened, I guess I was working on the uh, funding for the new audio video equipment for this area. So I will go ahead and put that back on my schedule, try to get that put together. We had an agreement with the school to help funding with that project, so hopefully we can just continue forward with that. Okay. Thank you, Carol. We have Jenny on the line here. Jenny, do you have anything to uh, add at this time? I do not. Thank you. Okay. We'll move into council comments, and we'll open it up to any council members. If there's none, then we'll move on to the other agenda items. Item three, uh, we consider a request to vacate and sell an alley. Gary? Again, um, I, I put the uh, map up on the screen, and uh, this is... We're not sure what it was or why it's there, but it appears to be a, maybe a, a, an alley at some time, at some point, or they designated as a future alley, but it's, uh, it's really out in the middle of nowhere and it will never be used. And, and uh, Jeremy's expressed an interest, and uh, we've talked with Greg Linet, the other property owner, and he's not interested in it. So uh, um, we, we're want to bring these forward tonight so it gives you guys an opportunity to express whether you have any concerns or not and the process would be that we would come back at our next meeting with a, uh, a resolution proposing the sale and then the following meeting which would be in November then we could have the public hearing and uh, and sale of the property so it gives you guys a chance to voice any concerns that you might have before we get into that process rather than just assume that you're all okay with it and bring a resolution to you so don't we advertise for bids then? Uh, we don't necessarily have to do that. We can just propose a sale and have a if you have a public hearing and, and propose a sale, then we can sell it. But as long as we have a public hearing, I don't have any problem with selling it. I and mean, it's just kind of an odd piece of a little strip of land bordering his property. Yeah, it's bordered on three sides by his property, so it's. Yeah. It's just kind of there. No one. There's no utilities. There's no issues. There's no field right next door. I mean, that's all field, isn't it? But if you if you don't have any issues moving forward, we'll go ahead and prepare things. For, see, we don't really need action tonight, but I just want to make sure that no one had any concerns before we no harm. made an assumption that you didn't have any concerns. So, thank you. Okay, moving on to agenda item number four, consider a request to vacate and sell some property. Uh, Travis, you might want to talk. I think Travis has spoken to you about this piece of property or before. I think it was last last spring, yeah. so it's been a while. Um, just wanted to um, bring it up at that time before he went ahead and hired a surveyor to, to measure and draw this out. Um, so he did pay for a surveyor. Uh, and mark the corners. My drawing isn't exact, um, and the surveyor is leaving five feet between the sidewalk and the new property line uh, because um, Jesus would like to build his garage or add on to the garage, make it a little bigger, um, and he'll obviously have to stay five feet from the property line as well. So that gives us 10 feet to work with um, not bad. for snow removal, and if we have to fix the trail at any time so I remember when you spoke about it and you can see that it clearly is a garage or it was already property. over <laughs> <laughs> I, all I cared about is as long as there was it was far enough away from the trail so we had mowing and access you know yep. there was a building right next door in two feet or something and again, this is the same thing. I just wanted to make sure, we wanted to bring it forth to make sure you guys didn't have any issues before we uh, brought something forward for you to have to take action. That gives you time to, to at least even now, we can bring it forward. And if you yeah. don't want to vote on it next, 
next meeting you, you don't have to, but you know, at least you know you're more aware of what's going on, I guess. So. Yeah. Do we have an option to let the public know? Public hearing. Is that it? Yeah. Do we advertise that? Uh, the public hearing public has hearing. to be published for not less than four, no more than 20 days prior to the meeting. So. <clears throat> I don't have any problem with going through the procedure and selling it to him. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to number five, approval of DGR substation project pay estimate. Uh, this is pay estimate number five. Um, it's for the amount due $176,338.29. Um, this is after the 5% retainage and the remaining balance after this payment would be 812000 $992.20. Um, this brings about 53% paid of the whole contract. And you are looking for a, an approval tonight? Yes, approve of the pay estimate. Questions or discussion? I make a motion to approve DGR's uh, pay estimate. In a second? I'll second. second. Go ahead, Christy. Okay. Christy's with a second. All those in favor of approving the request, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes five to zero. Thank you. Number six. We'll approve a list, uh, a lease on 16th Street. Again, this is for the temporary uh, um, housing that uh, we've talked about for quite some time, but. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the government uh, requires us to uh, have a lease in place, and they won't they won't start anything until we have that <laughs> lease signed. And um, Jenny, uh, do you want to speak on the lease? You reviewed it. Do you have any issues? No, I, I don't have any issues. The question that, and I think Gary, your email to me kind of confirmed that you had some issues with the lease. Um, the It has gone through planning and zoning and also the Board of Adjustment, and they both um, approved um, the, lo the location of them. They're on a temporary basis as long as it's, as long as it uh, terminates January of, or excuse me, December of 2025, everyone was okay with that, so. <clears throat> so move. I'll second that. Not a bad choice. We'll do a roll call vote on this. Uh, Harvey? Yeah. Anderson? Aye. Clucky? Aye. Allen? Aye. Warner? Aye. Passes five to zero. Thank you. Moving on to number seven, we've got a resolution 2024-26, approving and endorsing the selection process and submission to the IEDA for the Community Catalyst Building Grant. Who's got this? I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so. This is the uh, grant that I spoke about the last time where the IEDA um, gave us $400,000 to develop upper story housing in our downtown district. They had um, some pretty good rules or guidelines for us to follow. I did share all that with you guys. Um, the, I spoke with the, home, with the business owners downtown, um, kind of got feedback on those ones that were eligible. Um, one of the reasons that you would be ineligible is your building must be vacant on the top. So anyone that already had apartments is disqualified from being eligible. So other than that, it's just basically um, formality for the resolution. It's just letting you guys know this is the process and this is what we go through. And they've opened it up to uh, disaster, toward disaster areas. And so that's... Yes, this is considered an emergency yeah. catalyst. Grant. Is it, this is not just the normal catalyst. Process. No, because it's super competitive. Yes. So they're, they are, I guess you're lucky in a way because you, you do have the ability to get it because it's a disaster. 
they've earmarked it towards disaster areas. Otherwise, it's super competitive. I've dealt with it. But I want to see it run through Gary. I mean, you didn't know much about it, but these need to be uh, managed by the administrator. It needs to. So when we, I you know, this is. Patty and Christy to that list too, so that we have some council involved as well from the beginning. So considering you and Patty and Christy as part of that committee, so moved. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Do a roll call. Anderson. Aye. Clucky. Got a question. What committee are they on? That's what I want to know. The way the Catalyst Grant works, um, we've done, I've done one of these earlier. We um, were awarded one for the uh, fire building when Central Parts burned. How the process works is they have to present a budget. They have to present their scope of work. Um, once they ever reach 60% of that scope of work, um, we submit one bill. Then um, the next, when they've completed the project, IEDA comes out. They look at the building. They approve the work, make sure it matches what they said they were going to complete. And then they will award the final payment. I, I, I guess that's, that's how I ran the last one. And we were quite successful. So I. Lucky. Aye. Allen. Aye. Warner. Aye. Harvey. Pass it five to zero. Thank you. Item eight, discussion of flood related items. Travis, you're probably up first. Uh, yeah, the cleanup, uh, we've completed that Monday. Um, got rid of the, the dumpster that it was at 808 7th Street. Um, now we can start uh, putting all the invoices together and submit those to FEMA for the cleanup portion of the um, public assistance. So. On the uh, public assistance uh, for the city, I did include in your packet uh, the damage uh, inventory that uh, for you guys to review. It, uh, I think it currently totals 2.7 million if you include the housing buyout. So uh, that's, that's where the number's at as of today. Um, you know, and again, uh, as we talk about the flood-related items, we're looking at if we were to get involved in the housing buyout, of which we've had to include in the damage inventory, we're looking at about $400,000 that were our, was going to be our responsibility. So just keep that in number in mind. The, the also, you know, there's, there's uh, indirect effects that the flood has had, such as, uh, you know, Travis and I have been looking at um, our uh, telecom was one thing uh, that we've been looking at today and or in the last couple of days here. And, and uh, just just to bring you uh, um, some numbers uh, right now from pre-flood to, to current numbers, we're down about on the uh, Internet side about $3,500 a month. And on the uh, cable side, we're down about $4,500. That's a that's another hundred thousand dollars of revenue that we're down. So it's not just the damages, but the loss of revenue that we see, and that's that's just the inter, the telecommunications side. That we're uh, we haven't delved into electric and gas and all the others, but it just gives you something to keep in mind as we as we're moving forward and we're getting into, into budget season and we're talking financials and and the concerns that we have with some things. So. Um, the other thing I had on the public assistance side was a park shell replacement. We've talked briefly about that. Um, really tonight, the one thing that we would like is if you guys could uh, at least give a, a, a nod that, uh, that you would like it rebuilt in the same location or rather than a different location because we'd, we'd really like to, we've, we've actually applied for a flood permit to, uh, because even if we build it where it's at, that's in the floodplain, so we have to meet the, DNR criteria, so we've applied for that. But we would uh, we'd really like to, if we got that approval, to start hauling dirt in there, um, 
before the winter months and at least have fill the, let it settle over the winter before you re you know look at construction again but same spot you have to build it up right that's what you're getting at if you build in the same spot yeah okay. i like that location I, I think a lot of people do they use it a lot and there's not many locations other locations no. that would be in the park you know, it's kind of perfect well. you know you you can still have the farmers market and kids can play and, and, and the other thing to consider for you guys um is again we've talked about how would you know who would you like to handle the design of the new one and and um do you want the the parks and rec committee and or do you want city staff or some of the council want to be involved and you know be thinking about that we don't need to know that tonight but that's that's something we that we'll need to make some decision on at some point and and um, uh, it, would, it would be nice to to have some outside involvement outside the city. I would think too. It would be nice if the parks rent board would be involved in it to some level and have some input. But that's really up to you guys. You can determine how you want to handle it. But um, just some direction from you at some point on that would be helpful. How much fill would need to be brought in? Do you? Yeah. I must estimate at least two feet, but it could be up to three. Um, so we'll have to build it up and then feather it out the best we can. Okay. Moving on to update on donations committee. Well, Derek and I have a meeting with him this Thursday, tomorrow night at, what did I say, 5.15. Um, and we're going to review the business, churches, nonprofits, and landlord applications. And the committee will decide, you know, how much of that they feel they can allocate to them. Has there been any uh, funds distributed yet? To residential. To, to yeah, residential. Yes, there has been to the res residents that, you know, those living in the homes that were flooded. And then since then, we, we continue to take them while we're taking the, these others. And we have gotten some in, along with business landlords, churches. So there are there's some more residential. So what yeah, money do you have? Don't remember how much started. No, she was keeping <laughs> she was keeping tabs of the money. So I thought in case it increased or something, you know. Money lady. Okay. Anything else on that? If not, we'll move on to the FEMA trailers. I don't know if there's very much to add there. We've talked about the lease being signed and the trailers will be coming in. And the, supposedly the construction is going to take 35 days. Uh, that's uh, yeah, equipment we'll and material will <laughs> you know. start being brought in uh, in the next couple of days. Wow. So they're, they're just gearing up and just waiting, I guess, for the lease to, yeah. to be signed. And then they're going to hit the ground running. So. Hopefully within 35 or 40 days, we'll have trailers and people living in them. So. We're talking about 10? 10. 10. Yes, sir. We, I know there's a few that are going back to their homes because we had at least three campers pull out of Oak Grove today oh, yeah. by the company. That, right. So there's people starting to return out of them already. So. Oh, good. That's, that's good. and housing buyout um i just i just wanted to touch briefly on the housing buyout tonight again we've talked we've talked somewhat on that program um at the next meeting in october we'll bring a lot more detailed information as to what the responsibilities will be of the city and uh, the, li the list of houses has kind of been an ever-evolving thing we've had you know some have uh, changed their mind or they've sold them privately and other houses have come on and so we're we need to update that and, and we'll create a, a map so an overlay so you guys can see where those residents or uh, residences are all located and what the requirements are of the city or responsibilities are of the city and what the estimated cost is going to be and, and, um, and we can talk about that in October and then in November and hopefully we can make a decision on whether we want to participate or not so that Again, you have some time to think about it and maybe get some public input if they hear uh, the conversations um, online. Um, but uh, 
because uh, we need to start to getting the application process in place after the November meeting so that we can uh, um, we can we can kind of be first in line if we're going to get involved in this thing um, and uh, um, it's, again it's a FEMA <clears throat> it's a FEMA process so the application process is uh, pretty detailed pretty uh, pretty lengthy so uh, but it, it's primarily taking you guys through steps so you make good decisions based on the information you get provided and you have some time to think about it without it rather than just trying to having to make a snap decision the night of the meeting so um, so anyway then at the next meeting I'll, we'll have uh, Travis and I will both uh, work together and we'll we'll create some some graphics and some uh, some more detailed information on what the city can expect to be their responsibility both financially and otherwise and uh, um, and then we can then in November we'll have to make some kind of decision. So, yeah. so is the the state or FEMA a part of making that decision with us, or is that fall on us? It's pretty much our decision as to whether we want to be involved or not, and and which uh, and even which houses. It's it's uh, it's really becomes a city decision um, at that point. So, because the the property will ultimately become a city. People that currently own the homes will have to agree that they want to participate, but it's really the, the city's decision as to whether we want to be in that or we want to even offer that program, quite honestly. So it's a, it really comes down to a city decision. So. Did I miss anything? No, that was. Okay. Uh, we don't have any items on our consent agenda tonight, so we are at the end of our agenda. If I could get a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay. We've got a, a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Passes 5 to 0. Thank you. Our next regular council meeting is October 23, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For how long? Bye, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. Like six in the morning. I told Brian, make sure he gets his stuff back tonight. Like how many days? We're just, we'll be back sometime on Sunday. So it's just going to be the fall. Yes, that's my goal. I've heard it's beautiful. Yeah.